artists than ever because not only are we pushing the music digitally, artists are also creating digitally in their bedrooms with Pro Tools. You know, it's not real to real back like it was 30 years ago. So there's much more artists. But there was always something that was successful. If Nas was successful, there were 10 other Nas's that, that came after. There's always going to be something to imitate. But history, the cream rises to the top, and history dictates who stays and who goes. So it, basically talking about MCs who bite, biting MCs, you know what I'm saying? It's not allowed. It's still not allowed. It might be here in the moment, but there's only one Bobby Smurda. Like There'll be a couple of clones, but a year from now, we won't even remember. And do you think because of the digital, so, so many options for artists on the digital platform, there is a chance for greater individuality and greater creativity? Yeah, for sure. Latrice, what about that? Because you, you, you hear a lot of different artists, I'm sure, we haven't even heard of yet. Yeah. <laughs> is there more creativity because people have more access to production, to doing their own thing, creating their own thing? Um, I think, I think some of the younger artists that are really into music and the arts, I think that they are bringing all of that influence into their music and it, it radiates through, it shows. But, you know, like he said, there's always going to be a bunch of clones or people that are just doing something because it might be hot at the moment. But I think people have a good, you know, they can sniff out what's real and what's not. And some of them last and some of them won't. The authenticity comes through. Absolutely. And the longer they talk and the more they're sharing about the process. Yeah, then you start to see, okay, this may not be real. Or you just took this from this and put this out and... You know, it's very easy to see through it. I also think there's a kind of mythology around the creation of art, whether that's music or visual arts behind us, or television or film. It's not this, it doesn't necessarily have to be this isolated kind of process. In fact, maybe what's happening in this connected era is that at, as artists get a chance to engage with their audiences more, it shapes their art in really different and positive and constructive ways. So I don't, I, I, I'm sure it's a danger for artists to be concerned about reacting too much to what people want. But at the same time, what an unbelievable thing to have this very direct interaction. And, you know, the music industry is very in front of the art industry in this sense. There's a reason that galleries exist and they exist to kind of dis mediate the kind of relationship between a painter, like the one back here, and the public, right? Whoa, you gotta, let me explain to you what's going on with this art. And I think, you know, the artists really actually wanna explain for themselves. That's what Rob was right. saying. Yeah, now, you know, and, and you know, for those out there who know me, I, I recently um, made the move over to Genius. Um, I was at MTV, which is a much more traditional um, journalistic institution. Um, and, and what attracted me to Genius was to be able to have that closer connection and help fans get closer to artists, um, to get artists on the site and they explain their, their lyrics. Before, I would do an interview and I would transcribe it and I'd write an article and I'd try to tell the audience what the artist is trying to say. Over here at Genius, we, we're creating a bridge and I'm so happy that I'm here. We could just talk about the lyrics and the artist can tell the fans in their own words, oh, this is what I meant by, is that a world tour or your girl's tour? You see what I'm saying? Like, rather than us speculating, you know? Um, and it's just a richer, more fulfilling experience. What about the subject matter? Because this is something we hear a lot about at the radio station, that a lot on Street Soldiers comes up. Okay, that there, there's still this mythology out there that there's a, a in a back room somewhere at a record label, Latrice, I'm gonna ask you to help me out with this one. There's a group of people that are sitting there that are determining what hip hop fans are going to hear, what artists are going to blow up, and what songs are going to take over the charts and be played over and over and over. Yeah, well, I can't speak for every record label, but I know that, you know, we listen to the artist, and the artist dictates what the artist wants to do. So if the artist feels like there's a particular record that they want to go with as a single, then that's what we're going to go with, and that's what, what we're going to push to, the, to its furthest potential. Um, if they want to release a mixtape, then, you know, it's all about different strategies and what where the artist is in their career and what we may think is the best. Because obviously, and I think a lot of artists, and even though, I mean, it's not really the job, the fans job to remember this, but a lot of artists forget, you know, record labels are in it to make money and not only make, make themselves profitable, but also the artists. 
you know? So that's what they sign up for. And I think sometimes they forget that. So it's like coming to a common ground and figuring out, you know, how can we promote and engage with the artists and promote their vision to the public and just elevate it and take it to another level. A lot of them will already have set the foundation. It's just about taking it to that next step. And, and just to add to Latrice's point, I, you know, I think those walls are, are, are breaking down where there's this secret room of, of somebody pushing the button. Again, it happens with the fans and the audience. Um, you know, we, the audience, you guys chose Bobby Schmerber and Epic had to respond like, yo, this is hot. Somebody get out here and, and sign this kid. Um, you know, how many times have you heard the story of an artist with a single that, you know, the label maybe wasn't budging, it wasn't time. Look at Rick Ross, BMF, was on a mixtape before it was on his album. Sometimes the mixtape singles or, or the artists pushing out the music that they believe in helps to engage the fans, and get the machine rolling, and the label gets excited and everybody gets excited. Then the album process starts. So in a lot of ways, you know, the audience votes with their clicks what they choose to click on and what they choose to listen to. And, and, and that helps inform the labels and, and the media and what's hot. Look, I don't know, man. Maybe Slim Jesus might get a deal. I, I, I don't know what y'all think about him, but them three million clicks in just a couple of days is informing somebody. So you vote with your clicks and you inform the business, the music industry with what you click on. Time with, uh, with, with Genius. And as you look across the music on the digital platform,